Arc fault circuit interrupter protection has been required for dwelling units by the National Electrical Code for several years. The new 2014 code expands the area specified for protection, as well as allowing more options to provide arc fault protection for a branch circuit. An arc fault is an unintended arc created by current flowing through an unplanned path. Arcing creates excessive heat that can easily ignite surrounding material, such as wood framing or insulation, resulting in a hazardous situation. Arc faults are often unseen and can occur for a number of reasons, including damaged extension or appliance cords often pressed up against furniture or under carpets. Nails, staples, and screws inadvertently driven into wires inside the walls. Cracked, worn, or damaged wires or cords caused by environmental conditions, aging, or even rodents. Poor connections caused by loose terminal screws on receptacles and switches. Arc faults are often referred to as series or parallel arcs. A series arc occurs in one conductor and is a low level of current which is in series with and limited by the load. It is often the result of a bent or broken wire. A parallel arc occurs between two parallel conductors and is a higher level of current because it is in parallel with and therefore not limited by the load. It can occur when nails or staples are driven through wires. Historically, the NEC requires arc fault protected circuits in areas such as bedrooms, family rooms, dining rooms, hallways, and closets. In the 2014 NEC, the requirement for arc fault protection is expanded into kitchens and laundry areas. Additionally, the code will now require AFCIs and dormitories. So let's discuss the various installation methods for new residential construction allowable by the 2014 NEC code 210.12a and 210.12b for protecting a circuit using arc fault technology. Combination type AFCI breaker. This is the most common and most complete way to provide AFCI protection. It is installed at the panel and safely detects both parallel and series arcs in the entire branch circuit, including the home run circuit and downstream out through the connected cords. Branch feeder AFCI breaker with outlet branch circuit AFCI receptacle. This is a branch feeder type AFCI breaker installed in the panel with an AFCI receptacle installed at the first outlet box on the branch circuit. This method protects the entire circuit from the source and allows local reset capabilities. However, it requires two AFCI devices that can be costly. Supplemental arc protection breaker with an OBC AFCI receptacle. This method allows for a listed supplemental arc protection circuit breaker to be installed at the origin of the branch circuit in combination with a listed AFCI receptacle installed at the first outlet box on the branch circuit. While this allows for local reset capabilities, supplemental arc protection breakers are not currently available. Additionally, there are limitations in the home run length and the circuit must be continuous. System combination AFCI. Thermal mag breaker with an OBC AFCI receptacle. A listed tested pair that includes an OBC AFCI receptacle installed at the first outlet on the branch circuit in combination with a listed branch circuit overcurrent protective device installed at the panel. While this installation allows for local reset capabilities, tested and listed combinations of AFCI receptacles and upstream branch breakers are not currently available. Additionally, there are limitations in the home run length. Metal conduit or armored cable to the first AFCI receptacle. This installation requires metal conduit from the panel to the first AFCI receptacle in a circuit. This allows for local reset capabilities, but installation of conduit can be costly and impractical in many applications. However, this may be the most practical application for dormitories, hotels, or other commercial applications. And finally, the code also allows the use of conduit in concrete with AFCI receptacle. This method allows for metal or non-metallic conduit or tubing to be encased in not less than two inches of concrete for the portion of the branch circuit between the panel and the first AFCI receptacle in a circuit. This method has limited applications and can be costly. It's clear arc fault protection saves lives by mitigating arcing that could be an ignition source of a fire. As you can see, there are many allowable installation methods for AFCI protection. Before moving forward with an installation or project which requires AFCI protection, know your local code requirements in addition to the NEC methods. It's important to consider the application and then choose the best installation method to provide the preferred form of protection. For further information, visit eaton.com forward slash AFCI.